I know that's a personal thing, but I think this is the biggest struggle for any designer. Um, you know, where, where do they get those clients, those leads? Uh, does it come from your personal clients yeah. that you hold and you bring them together and you forge them together? Or do you go out there seeking for new leads? Well, it's funny because we said we're not going to take on any work for a certain period of time until we're sorted ourselves out and we've got our, I guess, set up or sorted out. But again, like you said, from the contact that we had from the past, and this is what I mean, when I said before that, make sure you surround yourself with people that are not just from the design world, but you know, just surround yourself with the different people. Go out and meet people. Go, I don't know, if someone invited to something, just go to it. You never know who you're going to meet. And that's what happened with us. Um, people were getting in contact with us that, I mean, I knew many years back, and Paul knew many years back, like two years, I think, one of the clients was. Yeah. So you never know when that lead might come. And luckily for us, it's come quite organically. Um, so people have been in touch with us that we've worked for before. Um, or people we worked for in-house somewhere um, and yeah so they eventually came back to us because I guess they saw that you know that we, we worked quite well with for them in the past and they came back for more. <laughs> okay wow Incre incredible organic is just uh, just amazing thing that yeah. you know how you know most agencies rely on organic yeah. um, leads and they have to, yeah. people I think a lot of people find that really really hard to believe as you said do your legwork yeah, you exactly. Engage with people and go out there and put yourself out there. Exactly. Um, you know, what kind of practices would you tell uh, you know sort of people who are just starting out in their business uh, to adopt to kind of really generate these leads? Uh, what kind of character characteristics should they embody? Uh, yeah. What kind of mindset should they embody to to really get this working for them? So you looked at me then. I thought <laughs> you were going to say, but I think for me, like you know, you've got to. You've, again, I keep going back to it, you've got to meet people, isn't it? I mean, sure. if they don't know about you, um, then they're not going to come to you for any work, especially if you're a designer. You've got to, I mean, now you've got so many platforms that you can kind of preach your praises. Um, I mean, when I was starting out, I don't know about you, but yeah, I think when we were both starting out way back when, we didn't have those kind of platforms. Mm -hmm. um, so it was literally just meeting people face to face or going out and, um, I don't want to call it networking, but it wasn't networking, but you're just going out and you just happen to meet someone. Um, and they eventually become into some kind of, or they know someone they, that knows someone that knows someone and it, you know, the lead comes back to you. But I think there's many things you can do. Um, I think we discussed this as well, that we have a list of you know, people that we want to target. Um, it's not necessarily that the top one might come to you, though they might look the most likeliest. It might be the one that, you know, the last one that might turn out to be um, yeah. a potential client. Mm -hmm. So don't, or I would say exhaust <laughs> all your avenues and all your resources if you if you want the work like you said you can't just sit back and hope that it's going to come to you yeah you've got to do the legwork and you've got to go out there and talk to people and meet people like i said you've got loads of platforms now that you can advertise on um yeah. but i think if you're doing something well it's going to show through and when people see that you're doing something well they'll come to you naturally as well sure. so like you said it's all uh, mostly most of your stuff is organic uh, leads and it's just from you guys interacting with people yeah. and uh, you know your history of clients as well potentially. Yeah. Uh, you know, Paul, just tell me a bit about how um, you know. Is there any other leads that you may get that uh, that's just by um, ma marketing that you might do, whether it's on yeah. social media? Has, has that has that happened for you? Um, not as of yet, although so. We're still relatively early, and, and, and we've gone through the process of actually getting set up. And, and like Fazan said, we had to hold off, and intentionally did so, didn't we? Because we found it really important to get our foundations in place first before we could take on projects. So we took a risk and, and, and literally said, "Let's hold back for a while. Let's keep those conversations on the burner, but let's not." And some of them actually pushed through, didn't they? Mm. And, and actually forced us to react quite quickly. Now, the, the one thing, and I know it's a topic we, we've kind of just been discussing, is, is all organic uh, leads. In all honesty, uh, that's a great thing to happen. And, and, and if you are out there and you are talking to people, but there will be a point that, that will exhaust, you will exhaust that avenue. And I would never rely purely on organic yeah. leads. Definitely. I mean, by all... Um, 
by all means, do what you do, do it well, enjoy it. It will shine through, and people will come to you know come to you. They'll see the work as long as it's out there. But you've got to put it out there. Um, and like you said, you don't want to use the word networking, but almost every opportunity is networking. I, I was on my way into work just the other week, and a guy stopped me and asked me for the time. And before you know it, I got talking to, to him, and, and he actually works for a, a tech company, small, just down the road. And they were looking for some creative work being done, and they were actually in the uh, process of bringing somebody on board to do it. And just a conversation in the street, and I didn't know this guy at all, and all he'd done is ask me for the time. But I didn't even offer my business card, he asked for it. Mm. So in that conversation, he just said, oh, I'm just working down the road. and. What are you up to? Oh, I'm, I'm away into work. Um, uh, what do you do? Uh, we have a branding agency. Mm -hmm. and, oh, wow, we're looking for somebody. Have you got a card on you? Of course I have. <laughs> <laughs> Ding! That's, Amazing. That's another thing as well. You've got to be prepared. <laughs> You've got to be ready to do it. Like, exactly. ev every interaction, and, and I don't want to sound really cold in, 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 in that sense, and you, you shouldn't really look at it in a, in, in a light like that, but every interaction could lead to some millions of possibilities. And, and, and that, they may not be financial gain or work, or, or, or they could be great relationships, um, but you have to put yourself out there in order yeah. to do it. Definitely. Wow, okay, cool. Uh, you know, I just want to talk about something a bit more wishy-washy, uh, potentially maybe spiritual, okay? So wow. I was just wondering, <laughs> like, uh, just tell me about how you feel about, uh, you know, some people think, like, you know, when it comes to, in acquiring this positive portfolio, uh, not portfolio, but uh, bringing in these clients, you need to kind of adopt a specific energy, maybe uh, a specific attitude. How do you feel, you know, uh, how do you feel about that? Is that like a wishy-washy topic for you? Or do you think that these things really, really hold precedence in your, in, in your business? For me? Yeah, both of you. So we can do uh, one at a time. So maybe Fazan or Paul first. <laughs> <laughs> or a gent. Uh, for me, it's 50-50. Sure. I, I believe, and we've, I think we've already talked around topics like this, and you might completely disagree with me now, which is fine. Um, for, for me, I, I believe in what you put out there in the world comes back, your positive energy, what people see in you, if they see that spark, if they connect with you, if it's positive. Um, that has a massive influence on, on everything. And the other 50%, is not spiritual in the slightest. It's bloody hard work, mm -hmm. and it's 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 getting out there and, and and actually grinding or hustling, however you you want to call it. Um, so yeah, so I, it's I, a balance. That's, I, that's I, good. I yeah. How would you look at that? Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think you know the effort you put in is what you get back. Um, I think you can work for something day in and day out and put all your effort into it, and it might not work out. But like I said before, as well, that negative don't see it as a negative, just, you know, you've got to turn it into positive and use that energy more productively. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if I'd call it spiritual, I don't know what I'd call it, but I, th I do think there's, you know, there's other um, things at work that you don't see. So, yes. you know, mm -hmm. you, I think you do put your effort, but if you sit back, nothing will happen. Do you know what I mean? There's no, yeah. like, you know, if you're meant, something is meant for you, it's not going to happen until sure. you actually put the effort in and, and take the responsibility on yourself to actually you know, work yourself to get there. Um, and if it doesn't work out, it's not a case of, you know, was it not just a case of it's not meant to be or it's not going to happen. It's just maybe it wasn't meant to be just at that point. Sure. Or maybe you just didn't do certain things and it could be that point. If it did happen, it wasn't the best thing for you and, you know, mm -hmm. it's good. it would have been a negative impact, you know. Um, funny story, if we go back when we were, le or when we worked together, Paul was actually going to start his agency earlier. Yeah. Yeah. And until I called and hired him, he called it off. So wow. maybe he would have started it, would have been a big success. Maybe it would have been a big failure. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so do you know what I mean? So that, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So yeah. It's yeah. certain things I think happen for a reason as well. So of course. Yeah. Um, it's just like I said. I think there's other things at work as well. But you know, the responsibility is yours to do the effort and Definitely. put the work in. In regards to uh, success and again spirituality, I think a mindset is a really important thing, right? Uh, you need to leave your baggage and your negativity at the door when you come into uh, come into work. You know, talk to me about you know what kind of mindset do you adopt to keep your spirit high, your cre cre keep your creative fuel uh, at a, at a peak at all times. 
is there anything that you adopt as this, uh, as a ritual? We'll start with Paul and then uh, speak to you for that. Um, <laughs> for me, I actually try to giggle in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> to lift you when you wake up. You just, just Not straight away, I don't, that'd, that'd be <laughs> creepy. <laughs> My girlfriend would probably leave me. Um, but I, I, do, uh, I, I do, in the shower, I might think something funny and I will will the, the laughter to come and sometimes I, I will just crazily cackle away to myself. And what that does is it lightens me up before the start of the day and, and it separates me from that thought of that checklist that I've got to work through when I, when I get here um, and it, it just loosens me up a little bit and puts me in a, in a more positive mind frame and if I can do that most mornings because it's not possible every morning um, then at least you're going to kind of start on the right foot. 100% cool and yourself? Um, I don't know if I have any particular rituals but I've, I do, I've always adopted a mindset where you know I guess like Paul both I think we're positive people and both very optimists so we, we always see the bright side of things and I think you've got to do that and I don't think you should exhaust that kind of um, thinking process. Mm -hmm. um, I think you said about coming into work with a mindset I think it should be both ways you know you should go home with a mindset you should, uh, we were talking about this the other day Just as well day, yeah. so you know you've got to I don't know I mean it might be a bit blunt but you know it's not the end of the world when the way I think about it so if something's gone wrong it's not the end of the world you just kind of you got to work through it or there's always going to be other opportunities or is you know like I said there's maybe not meant to be that just at that particular point or you didn't do it right you know it could be up to you um, but um, I don't know I mean I, I one thing I realized as well during the times is like I said before don't get stressed out don't put yourself under unnecessary pressure and have a life outside of work. <laughs> and I think that's what helps us as well. And I say that to you all the time. Yeah. I'm always calling him, he's like working late and I'm like, just stop working. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you've got a life as well, just, you know, enjoy life. Because you can't get bogged down with just work, 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 because it won't, it won't help that, like I said, again, we're creative people, it won't help your creativity. Um, and it won't help if you don't have a social life. So you've got to have a social life. I think Definitely. those are kind of the few things I've, I've I've learned over the years. I never used to be like that, but I've learned over the years that you've got to have time to just switch off. Um, and if you don't, and if you see everything in a negative light, then you know, no one's going to really talk to you. You're going to be that yeah. <laughs> annoying person in the corner or something. Do you know it's what I mean? True. It's true. So. You've got to have that, and, and that ties back into the spiritual sort of things. Having that positive energy, that burst. Um, but one thing you touched on, which is a, a really important thing to try and master is the art of letting go mm. because that's the hardest thing of all is to be able to say tomorrow's another day I, yeah. can, I can walk away now and and and, and disconnect and what and like you said that transition walk out of work that's been a tough day and go back home with a smile on your face is hard yeah um but that transition is very important to make it through sure. so you can pick things up again the next day that's yeah of course i completely agree with you i think we all store stress uh, in our bodies you know, just yeah. as a, you know, it's just a thought that you just, that you just needs to get destroyed in our bodies and we store them in different places. So moving on uh, towards, you know, we were just talking about mindset before. And I think a lot of our problems in regards to mindset is the way our belief systems in regards to money, how we view money and how we yeah. manage it, right? Uh, and I think a lot of people in the creative sphere, designers, filmmakers, uh, brand strategists like yourself, they're struggling with this regard, trying to acquire those high paid jobs as well, high paid clients, and to start their own business and maintain that business, paying their employees, paying for the office space and the equipment, etc. You know, you know, talk to me about how, you know, how you deal with overheads, uh, you know, how did you come together as a, as a business? Was it savings? Was it, uh, you, know, was, you know, was it a loan? Uh, would you advise taking a loan to start your first business? Firstly, I think there's a negative mindset of judging success by the amount of money you're earning. I think, like we said, I think the biggest success we had was getting the name for ourselves. So I think that was one of the... Get an office. And get, you know, that was... And that, we, we'd, we'd made it. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, these little milestones are the ones that, I, I guess, judge your success. And I think if you're good at what you do, do what you're good at and the success will follow. Mm -hmm. Um, but in terms of loans, I, w I would highly, highly um, say not to get loans to start anything off. Um, 
I think if you're starting off that on that back foot, it's, it's just one of those kind of turmoils you just get deeper and deeper and deeper into. Um, I think I say that. I think we talk about it all the time. Just keep your overheads low, as yeah. much as possible. Constantly, sure. you know, you have to be very strategic in your overheads. Yeah, you got. Yeah. If you're starting I mean, you guys off, are a two-person team. So yeah, you got to. If you're starting off, you got to. You got to think about you know your overheads quite you know strictly, and you got to shed you know the weight where you can. Mm -hmm. um, again, like I said, especially if you were just a startup, and like I say, I say to Paul as well. Let's just keep our overheads low because we're starting off and. Um, don't force yourself into any kind of situation where you're going to struggle later. Mm -hmm. So that's why. So be smart about it and don't have unnecessary spendings. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, if you if you're just a single person, if you're just freelancing and stuff, and you know you're not getting the success or you're not getting the work or the big clients that you're getting, go back to doing what you love doing because it could be that you're trying to force it, and you you might in that process of forcing it, you might forget. You know what what you're actually doing it for. Yes. The whole point yeah. is that, is, like I said, this is my passion, and that's why I'm doing it. And that's exactly. how it should be, and you should maintain. You should maintain that, right? Yeah, I guess. I mean, you've got to be realistic as well. You've should. got bills to pay. You know, yes, of people have. You know, people yeah. got to eat, and people have to <laughs> get you know roof over the head. But yeah, yeah like you're right. There's a balance to it. Mm. Don't you know get to a point where you're losing money, um, or you're you know living out your car, <laughs> or, no, yeah. or not having dinner. Um, but at the end. Again, on the other side is that don't do something where you're in the loss or you're in the back foot. Yeah, I think to some degree you have to take a risk. No matter yeah. how you do it, it's a risk. Right? Business in today, they, they pop up one day, they're gone the next. Mm. Um, I think our approach with it was a, a strategic approach, and rightly so, because that's yeah. what we do. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> um, it was a case of we continued contracting whilst defining the foundation for the business, and. And we were almost running them alongside each other, and that was going to f enable us to do that. And we knew there was a transitional period to continue going through to, to actually get there. So it's part savings, part what could be earned during that time period. It was like get your head down, work as much as you can, and cut things at home. You know, don't buy expensive things if you can, you can put money away. And then, because the first kickoff, it's like hemorrhaging money from the start. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, you there's just no matter how structured you are, and we were seriously structured in terms of broke down what our overheads would be in the first couple of months. There are going to be costs that come from somewhere you're not going to anticipate, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Um, you know, over budget, over budget, over budget, and we did. Mm. We we you know we over budgeted um, and there were still costs that came back that we didn't we didn't anticipate when we actually went through it. Wow. So and how do you deal with those uh, you know un unforese unforeseeable circumstances? By over overestimating. Okay. You so overestimate you your budget. Yeah. O overestimate and, and have a safety net to some mm -hmm. degree. Mm -hmm. um, and, and ours was that if things didn't work out, things were, were tight or we struggled, then we'd contract. We yeah. would fully prepared to both of us be out there contracting while our office is sat empty so that we could pay the rent wow. and then coming back in the evenings and doing the work we should have been doing whilst we we're in the office. So you're prepared to, you know, pre prepared to take that risk and you know what comes with that risk uh, when you jumped into starting your business. Yeah, it's like Paul said, isn't it? There's a risk to everything. <laughs> so you, nothing is, you know, like easy peasy as I say. Um, so you know what you guys, the guy, you, both of you guys knew what you guys uh, were getting yourself into. You've got to manage your risks, yeah. Yeah, especially yeah. as you get older and your responsibilities get more. So yeah. you've got to think about, like you said, you've got to um, manage um, the risks. Um, and like you said, over um, overestimate whatever you think is going to go out because you need that safety net. Perfect. So you can't be naive about jumping into a business. You have to know what you get yourself into. Really, that, that's what you would say, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, you, you have yeah. to be aware of, of um, what the, the, the risks are and what yeah. the potential avenues are. Yeah. And the only way you can do that is by anticipating as much as possible, Perfect. planning, preparing, and, and you, do, you do take risks. We, we are in still a risk. Um, a good example is my dream for many years was to buy my own house, I own my own house. Mm -hmm. um, I took the, that money and put it in there. That money's gone. 
So <laughs> that dream, that's one dream down and I'm working on the other. But hopefully, if I do it well and I enjoy what I do and I love what I do and, and, and that gets out there, then those two dreams will come back come and meet together. up at some yeah, point. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. You know, uh, I think, again, you know, this is really solid stuff for mindset. Uh, moving towards more, of, uh, towards more of a positive direction, we spoke about the struggles of start, starting a business and the finance, financial struggles and the risks that come with it. What's the kind of uh, positive, foreseeable future in regards to business? Um, I think most of us, uh, the reality of it is that we're in the design business following our passions and nurturing that. But at the same time, there's, uh, we want a level of success and we want to create a future for ourselves, for our families. Yeah. And we have this dream life that we, we're all trying to aim for. Um, you know, what, how do you, like, how do you for, like, starting with Paul, how do you foresee the future? What's, your, what's, what's the big dream? And have you set goals to actually uh, achieve that dream? Do you, do, you, do you want to see your business grow towards hiring more people in the future, uh, bringing in a bigger office space? Most definitely. For us, the and, and, and it, it comes down to how you measure success and, and, and obviously different people and different things. Um, so for me, from and it comes from this entrepreneurial drive that uh, struck me from when I was young that we didn't have much when we were kids, so growing up I knew that I needed to work hard to have that little bit more and all I ever really wanted was security. But you could ask the question, how do you define security today? What's, what's secure? Mm. You know. Um, so I'm working towards a secure future for me, a partner, we, 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 you know, to, 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 to have a house and as, as long as I have a house similar to, to what I grew up in, um, I'd be happy uh, with that. In terms of the idea of money and getting clients and, 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 and what that brings, for me, I only receive that as in a way to evolve the company. Um, the, the quotes that we put out there, the clients that we work with, that's enabling us to, to build that future to grow. Ultimately, I, I, I want um, me and Fazan to be able to walk into an office filled with people and have different tiers of, of teams that all collaborate together, um, but there are managers that manage certain areas, and we're able to go and interact with that, that whole process. Um, and also, then we can spend our time actually on building a culture. We've talked yeah. about this quite a this lot. Is, this is actually quite beautiful, because I can really see that you have this dream uh, you know, of, for your business, but it's not driven towards the greed of money, but rather money is the means here to actually achieve that dream, which is, you know, have that really that beautiful creative environment, to follow your passions, it's the and bring all the benefits um, to, to your family. So in the end of the day, money is, the, is just the means, and you've got these higher goals that you want to try to achieve. And I think that's, that's absolutely brilliant, you know? So, uh, sorry, Fuzan, you were gonna say? No, I was saying, like, same thing. I think for me, I don't have, weirdly enough, I don't have a set goal, but I have kind of like, um, I, I have, oh, sounds cliche, but I have a vision of what a you know, working environment would be. You know, I want an ideal, my ideal you know, um, studio or office space. And yeah, we speak about it quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think we go, I go on rants about this, but yeah, <laughs> you know, what, what would, yeah, exactly. What would be an ideal uh, working, I mean, I've worked in so many different agency offices and I think similar to Paul. And I still, I don't think I've come across, I've come across them close to what I'd see as an ideal working environment. Um, but I want to. I've got a vision of what an ideal environment would be, and like you said, it's not about the making the money. That's the end result. You know, why we're doing it is to have that great work environment where we can have that creative freedom, if that still exists. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I don't have some kind of set goals in terms of. Um, I mean, just talking about work, but I, I just have this idea of what kind of a agency I want to build, and hopefully, Unrattled is going to be that one. Perfect. Yeah, that Awesome. So you guys have that dream. I really hope you guys achieve that dream in the near future. Thank you. And it's so, it was so awesome having you both uh, in the show. And we've covered a lot of great topics. I hope that our audience are really happy with uh, what they've received from you guys. Hopefully. And hopefully we'll catch you in the future in another show, in another yeah. episode. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thank you, Amar. Pleasure to meet you. you Thank you, man. <laughs> <Good job. laughs>